I want to talk about something that doesn't really get as much attention as it should, and that is immigration and, in particular, the Biden administration's response, because his response has been cruel. And really, to call it cruel is an understatement. He's not doing everything that Donald Trump did. He's not instituting the family separation policy that Trump did, but still, there's not that much of a change from his predecessor and he needs to be called out and he needs to be condemned because this isn't just immoral it is a violation of international law so in an article for common dreams sunny robinson breaks it down the biden administration promised reformed and humane immigration policies that is not what we are getting illegal and inhumane is how harold co a state department legal advisor described the biden administration's escalation of title 42 as its major immigration control tool co resigned in october of 2021 human rights first also quotes public health experts as saying title 42 misuses public health authority to violate refugee law block asylum at u.s ports of entry and expel people seeking refuge to danger initially the administration said it would resume the so-called migrant protection protocol remain in mexico requiring asylum seekers to take a number thus be metered while remaining in mexico awaiting their hearings in late october they stated they would end mpp and on november 1st stated they would end metering but with title 42 still a major control mechanism it is not clear what this will change, what occurs when migrants are returned to Mexico or further south. They are subjected to all the potential violence of Mexico. They are at the mercy of drug cartels, people smugglers, and sex slavery rings, some of which involve Mexican officials. They're faced with insufficient numbers of shelters and necessary resources. Corruption and danger remain unimaginably high. Since Biden took office, at least 7,647 kidnappings or attacks on people expelled under Title 42 are identifiable. Since November, 8,000 Haitians have been expelled despite Haitians in the U.S. being eligible for temporary protected status. 8,000 Hondurans and 6,000 Guatemalans, many of them Maya, have been expelled without allowed asylum claims. Despite the claim of not turning away families, 29,000 children, 9,000 of them under 5 and 600 infants, have been expelled. Now, sometimes when we gloss over statistics like this really quickly, you kind of lose the reality that this is human suffering. So I want to slow down and go through some of these facts again. Since Biden took office, at least 7,647 kidnappings or attacks on people expelled under Title 42 are identifiable. People expelled are being put in danger. That's what the Biden administration is doing. We're deporting children. 9,000 under 5, 600 infants. This is an inhumane, cruel, so-called immigration system that we have. And under international law, it is a right that you are allowed to apply for asylum at a legal port of entry. And it's not just international law, it's U.S. law. But the Biden administration is using Title 42 to deny people this human right. So when Biden ran for office, he promised a more humane immigration system. He promised to stop the cruelty that we saw with the Trump administration. Now, people like me did not believe him because he came from the Obama administration, which was incredibly cr cruel. I mean, Obama was known as the deporter in chief. So when you see back to back to back administrations exhibit this absolutely inhumane and cruel stance towards immigrants, you just you can't help but feel hopeless. Now, there are things that the Biden administration can do if they were serious about treating immigrants as human beings. Um, first and foremost, they can end Title 42. Now, Robinson goes on to explain Title 42 needs to be ended and Congress must withhold its funding. Asylum requests should be processed at the border. Detention, removal, and mistreatment of migrants must end. Families should remain together and family reunion in the United States should be facilitated. Asylum seekers must have social, financial, and legal services and humanitarian aid. TPS should be expanded where people face grave danger, including Haiti, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Yemen, Cameroon, and Afghanistan. Finally, pathways to citizens for all 11 million immigrants, especially DACA, TPS, and essential workers, must be created. We must demand all of this of Congress and the Biden-Harris administration over and over until it is achieved. And that's part of the issue there, that last sentence. There's no pressure on the Biden administration. Honestly, I hate to do whataboutism, but the liberals who claimed to hate the fact that Trump was locking kids in cages are silent now. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are silent. And that's so unacceptable. You shouldn't just 
permit this because now someone who you like is in the White House. You should be consistent and acknowledge that this is an abuse of human rights, a violation of international and domestic law. Now, what makes matters worse is the fact that we are responsible for all of these countries being destabilized and in some cases destroyed. We keep meddling in Latin America. We keep meddling abroad. And then when inevitably we create a refugee crisis, we destabilize their countries and create dangerous environments, we're the ones who are outraged when they dare seek asylum in our country after we destroy, destroyed their country. It's, it's just so unreasonable. It's so grotesque. But it's predictable. This is the United States, and it feels like with each passing year, we grow more and more cruel when it comes to our stance towards immigrants who are human beings that, just like us, have aspirations for the future. Just like us, they want to live good lives. Just like us, they want to be able to protect their families. But we're denying them that after we fucked up their countries. It's just, it's truly, <sighs> I don't even know how to describe it. So people need to pay attention to this and they need to not let Biden off. There should be constant pressure for him to do the right thing and Title 42 and actually treat immigrants like human beings. It's not like the United States is short on resources. It's not like we can't afford to house all of these immigrants. We can. And we shouldn't just provide them with a pathway to citizenship. If you're here... You're an American, you're a citizen. That's as easy as it should be. And that might seem like an oversimplification, but again, we are the ones who choose to make this system unnecessarily complicated. To even say that we have an immigration system would be, uh, I think, a misnomer because we don't. We don't have a proper immigration system. It's fucking broken fundamentally to its core, which is why people just opt to come here illegally. Because when you're fleeing danger, you don't have time to apply, send in paperwork, do all this shit. You just leave because it's either you stay and die possibly or you leave and you, you break the law. We're not giving people many options. So this has to be talked about. I would encourage liberals to be consistent here. Leftists are consistent. And this was one of the main criticisms throughout the 2020 primary you know, against other Democrats because many of them just... They weren't showing us or giving us enough confidence that they wouldn't do what Obama did when he was in office. But Biden hasn't changed much. And again, not to deny that he, you know, tried to put a moratorium on evictions when he first got in office. But, you know, when a court shot that down, he could have circumvented that. He could have rescheduled deportations that were already set to take place. But he, you can tell he doesn't want to. And now He's just doing what we always do. So it's gross and people have to pay attention and people need to call him out and hold him accountable because this is not acceptable. It's not okay when Trump does it and it's not okay when Democrats like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris do it.